Hello guys, we are going to talk about a drama thriller film called Sleeping with the Enemy from 1991. A lot of interesting things are waiting for you. The movie shows us Laura. She is a beautiful woman enjoying a vacation on the beach. Her husband Martin is a successful investment consultant in Boston. They live in a summer house. The couple is spending time at a party and their eyes meet. It was love at first sight. The next day, Martin notices that a towel is hanging in the wrong place in the bathroom. He takes Laura there and reminds her not to make the same mistake again. Later, he meets a neighbor. The neighbor tells him that Martin's wife is wonderful. They talk about sailing and how much Martin loves sailing. The neighbor invites him to go sailing together, but he refuses, saying that his wife Laura is afraid of water and cannot even swim or go near water. Martin returns home. He doesn't like the fact that his neighbor is constantly staring at his wife, so he starts beating her. After the fight, he quickly apologizes and then tells her about the invitation from the neighbor to go sailing this week. At this point, we can say that Martin is an obsessive husband who physically and emotionally abuses Laura. Later that evening, Martin returns home. He apologizes again and gives her flowers and then a red dress, her favorite color. He undresses her and makes her wear the dress. The next day, they talk about Laura's desire to work in the library, but Martin forbids her to do so. At this point, Laura reminds Martin that he didn't even allow her to attend her own mother's funeral six months ago. At night, the weather begins to deteriorate and a neighbor assures Laura that nothing will happen. Martin looks at them with an eerie look. Then the weather gets worse and worse. Suddenly the boat capsizes. Laura falls into the water and Martin panics because he knows she doesn't know how to swim. They find Laura's life jacket and realize that she most likely would not have been able to survive in the water. A few days later, there is a funeral procession because Laura has died. Martin is very upset. He is sad without her, but in fact, Laura survived the storm. At this point, we can say that she planned and staged her own death. Then she returns home, grabs her things, cuts her hair, and throws her engagement ring into the toilet in a rage. She leaves this place forever. Laura is traveling by bus to Iowa. An elderly woman offers her fruit. They talk, and Laura tells her that she is going to see her mother. In fact, her mother is alive, and the last time she mentioned her death, which was also a lie. She then tells a story about her husband beating her and how she was trapped at home. Laura talks about faking her own death. She goes on to explain that she lived with her husband for three years. The bus brings her to Iowa, and we finally see a smiling woman who looks like she just got out of prison. She enjoys the little things in life. Then she rents a house. The rent for the house is $700. She takes a shower, and after the shower, she puts the towel in the wrong place. Ben is standing outside on the lawn. He is her neighbor, and she smiles at him. We return to Martin's house. He is walking along the shore, and a piece of light bulb hits him in the leg. He realizes that everything is over, and he won't be able to live as he used to. Laura goes outside and starts picking apples. Suddenly, Ben appears and tells her that she could be arrested for stealing. Then he says that they can make a deal. The woman replies that she doesn't make deals, so he goes back to her and brings her apples. Ben apologizes and says he didn't mean to scare her. He introduces himself and says that he is a drama teacher at the college. He wants to get to know her better, but Laura does not reciprocate and asks him to leave. Ben asks her out and leaves. Meanwhile, Martin is at work. He receives a call from a woman who works at the swimming complex. She remembers Laura and expresses her condolences. Martin is shocked because Laura never went to the pool. Then the woman tells him that Laura used to come there every morning to take swimming lessons, and she became a very good swimmer. Hearing this, Martin was very angry. He then goes home and spends hours going through her things. While going through her things, he notices the wedding ring she threw away earlier. He takes it out and realizes that Laura might be alive, and she faked her own death. Laura goes to Ben's house with an apple pie she baked with his apples. She asks him to put on some music while they eat dinner. Ben finds out that she is looking for a job and offers her a job with him. Laura refuses. Then he notices a wound on Laura's head. He suspects that she had a difficult past. Laura makes up a new name for herself, Sarah. The next day, Martin continues to ask everyone about Laura. He goes to the nursing home where Laura's mother used to live. After some conversation, it turns out that Laura took her mother out of there six months ago. Ben helps Laura get a job at the library. He asks her about her real name. Ben says that he likes her, but the girl does not reciprocate and upset Ben leaves. Later, she calls her mother from a phone booth to hear her voice. Martin hires a private detective and offers him $20,000 if he finds Laura in a few days. Meanwhile, the whole city is celebrating Independence Day. Ben spots Laura at the celebration. He shakes her hand and they are both happy to see each other. He apologizes, but she says it's okay. Then they talk a little about their personal lives and Laura tells him that she misses her mother because she hasn't seen her for the last six months. Laura's mother is in a nursing home. Martin finds her and stands by her side. Laura is at home. She hears a knock on the door and Ben invites her to a special place. He brings her up on stage and sings a song for her. They are both having a lot of fun and are clearly in love with each other. 
They start dancing. Later, Ben and Laura return home and start kissing. Laura resists and pushes him away. She wants him to leave. The next day, Ben is upset and disappointed that Laura keeps pushing him away. Later, Laura comes to him and tells him about her ex-husband. He was abusive and she had to run away from him. Ben assures her that nothing will happen to her. Later, Ben helps Laura pretend to be a man and then she goes to the nursing home. She goes to her blind mother, Chloe, and starts singing her a lullaby that her mother used to sing to her. Then she tells her that she has left Martin and tells her about Ben. Chloe tells her to be strong and not to let anyone hurt her anymore. Martin is in the same nursing home and asks about Laura. Then he is about to leave and Laura drinks water from the fountain and walks away. The woman tells Martin about the visitor they had today and he runs outside to find him. Laura returns home and is overwhelmed with joy. She throws herself into Ben's arms. Martin goes to see Chloe posing as a private detective. He tells her that Martin is in town and they need to find Laura to warn her. She doesn't know where to look for her, but tells him about Ben and the college where he teaches. Martin is about to brutalize Chloe, but he is interrupted by a nurse and leaves. The next day, he goes to the college and kidnaps a professor, but finds out that it's not the one he was looking for. Martin finds out that Ben teaches his students at the college and starts following him. Later that evening, he follows him and sees a happy Ben and Laura. He is shocked and jealousy takes over his mind. At this point, we can say that Martin is a psychopath. Laura and Ben return home and she takes a bath and rests. Suddenly, she notices that the towels are not aligned and gets scared. She starts nervously checking the house. When she checks the house, she finds that all the kitchen towels are also out of alignment. She opens the kitchen cupboards and is happy to see that it is a mess. Then she goes outside and notices an open window. Ben enters the house and Laura is clearly scared. They then have dinner outside and he kisses her before he leaves. She goes inside and turns on the music. Martin's favorite song is playing. Then she notices that the closet is open and the fire alarm goes off. Laura is very scared because she thinks Martin might have found her. She then goes to the kitchen cabinets and finds that they have been rearranged exactly to Martin's standard. She cries, knowing that her fears have been realized. The man has been stalking her until the very end. Then he suddenly appears and kisses her. Ben knocks on the door. He reminds her of the meeting tomorrow. Soon after, Ben breaks down the door and attacks Martin, but he defeats him. Martin shows her the ring and Laura knees him below the waist, forcing him to drop the gun. She grabs Martin's gun and points it at her husband. Martin says that even the police cannot protect her. He loves her. She calls the police and reports that she has eliminated the attacker. Laura shoots Martin and he falls to the ground. Martin crawls to her, takes her gun and starts shooting, but there are no more bullets. Martin finally dies of his wounds and Laura goes to Ben. They embrace while waiting for the police. 